Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Genesis chapter 34, but before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 34. One day Dina, the daughter of Jacob and Leah, went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. But when the local prince, Shem's son of Hamor, the Hivite, saw Dina, he seized her and raped her. But then he fell in love with her, and he tried to win her affection with tender words. He said to his father, Hamor, Get me this young girl, I want to marry her. Soon Jacob heard that Shem had defiled his daughter, Dina. But since his sons were out in the field herding his livestock, he said nothing until they returned. Hamer, Shem's father, came to discuss the matter with Jacob. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons had come in from the field as soon as they heard what had happened. They were shocked and furious that their sister had been raped. Shem had done a disgraceful thing against Jacob's family, something that should never be done. Hamer tried to speak with Jacob and his sons. My son Shem is truly in love with your daughters, he said. Please let him marry her. In fact, let's arrange other marriages too. You give us your daughters for our sons, and we will give you our daughters for your sons. And you may live among us. The land is open to you. Settle here and trade with us, and feel free to buy property in the area. Then Shem himself spoke to Dina's father and brothers. Please be kind to me and let me marry her, he begged. I will give you whatever you ask, no matter what dowry or gift you demand. I will gladly pay it. Just give me the girl as my wife. But since Shem had defiled their sister, Dina, Jacob's sons responded deceitfully to Shem and his father, Hamer. They said to them, we couldn't possibly allow this because you're not circumcised. It would be a disgrace for our sister to marry a man like you. But here is a solution. If every man among you will be circumcised like we are, then we will give you our daughters and we'll take your daughters for ourselves. We will live among you and become one people. But if you don't agree to be circumcised, we will take her and be on our way. Hamer and his son Shem agreed to their proposal. Shem wasted no time in acting on this request, for he wanted Jacob's daughter desperately. Shem was a highly respected member of his family, and he went with his father Hamer to present this proposal to the leaders at the town gate. These men are our friends, they said. Let's invite them to live here among us and trade freely. Look, the land is large enough to hold them. We can take their daughters as wives and let them marry ours, but they will consider staying here and becoming one people with us only if all of our men are circumcised just as they are. But if we do this, all their livestock and possessions will eventually be ours. Come, let's agree to their terms and let them settle here among us. So all the men in town in, in the town council agreed with Hamor and Shem, and every male in the town was circumcised. But three days later, when their wounds were still sore, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, who were Dina's full brothers, took their swords and entered the town without opposition. Then they slaughtered every male there, including Hamar and his son Shem. They killed them with their swords, then took Dina from Shem's house and returned to their camp. Meanwhile, the rest of Jacob's sons arrived, finding the men slaughtered. They plundered the town because their sister had been defiled there. They seized all the flocks and herds and donkeys, everything they could lay their hands on, both inside the town and outside in the fields. They looted all their wealth and plundered their houses. They also took all their little children and wives and led them away as captives. Afterwards, Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have ruined me. You've made me stink among all the people of this land, among all the Canaanites and Perizzites. We are so few that they will join forces and crush us. I will be ruined and my entire household will be wiped out. 
but why should we let him treat our sister like a prostitute? They retorted angrily. Amen. So what did you think of Genesis chapter 34? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on in the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Genesis chapter 34 is titled Revenge Against Shem. And um, so yesterday I mentioned that Jacob was never supposed to stop in this town, but he did. And obviously it was a wicked town. It was a town that did not believe in God. They were not worshiping God in any way. Um, so I wrote aside, Jacob and his family suffered for his disobedience um, because he was supposed to go to Bethel. Um, and I also wrote that socialization should be supervised and protected. So his daughter decided to go off and meet with some of the other girls in the town. and. Um, in this case, um, there is a reason why people should have chaperones, there should be um, adult supervision in social gatherings um, just because of situations like this. Um, and fortunately, it's not as bad as it used to be, at least not in America. I don't know about where you live, but um, it's still a possibility. But when she went to go meet with these um, other young women in the area, the local prince saw her and he raped her. And then he fell in love with her and um, he tried to win her affection through tender words. And it's just so sad because um, he could have fell in love with her um, and then married her or asked to marry her and then you know, did it the proper way. Um, but he did it in a backwards way where instead of you know loving her he was in lust with her and that's the the difference when we give in to our lustful desires and he raped her and um but after he raped her he fell in love with her he decided he wanted to be with her he sent his father to go to jacob and see if he could marry her and um you know this is where it gets really really bad and it just it goes to show you that a lot of people believe that everything in the bible is the example of the way that perfectly that we're supposed to live but most of the Bible is things that we're not supposed to do. And I think it's important to just recognize that. So, um, you know, they decided they wanted to, um, he wanted to, you know, make a treaty with Jacob's family and say, you know, your people can marry our people. And, you know, then, you know, we can just commingle. Um, so, um, Jacob's sons responded deceitfully to Shem. So he said that they said, well, we couldn't possibly marry, you know, let our daughters and sisters marry you um, because you're not circumcised. And so they tricked them into getting circumcised so that they could be weak. And what's even worse is that what's just as bad is that the um, people agreed to be circumcised because they said that once we marry um, their daughters, we'll be able to take everything that they have as ours. Um, so, you know, both sides were being deceitful in it. Um, and I wrote up to the side that covering their deception, they were covering their deception with spiritual words and that people use religion as a cover for evil. So it's important to recognize that a lot of the times people are using religion in wrong ways or in, in deceitful ways or to, you know, promote their own agenda. Um, so they ended up getting circumcised, which made them weak. And at that time, um, Levi and Simeon, who were Dina's uh, um, full brothers, went in and killed all the males. They took all the children, the women captive. They took all the flocks and the herds and all the riches um, of the town. So they used the guise of circumcision in order to weaken all the men so that they could go in and kill everybody. And it's just, it's really sad that they used something of God in order to um, run through this town. And again, this is not something that's new. We've seen it a lot where people will use um, the cover of religion or spiritual words in order to do things that are just horrible and wrong. Um, so then, um, so then after they plundered, Jacob was so upset. He was like, you have ruined me. All these people are going to come after us. You know, what have you done? And Jacob, um, and then Levi and Simeon were like, hey, but, um, you know, were we just supposed to let them abuse our sister and not have any kind of retribution? Um, so 
I also wrote to decide the only cure for worldliness is to separate from it. So what would have kept this from happening is for for them not to commingle with um, you know people who were not of the same morals and values that they had, and then this would have been less likely to have taken place. Um, and. I also wrote off to the side, the best thing a parent can do for their child is to choose the godly path. Um, so it's important that we are sheltering our children and again, you know, separating them. And it's, it's okay and it seems, you know, odd. They may um, rebel against it, but we are to do our best to try to keep them from the, the worldliness and the people who are not of the same morals and values that we have. Um, and we will, I wrote off to the side Genesis 49, 5 through 7. So it's important to just recognize that the sin that they created in here will have consequences later on um, as we continue through Genesis. So we'll just see how the, con the, the consequences of your sins will follow you even if you are forgiven. So that is my interpretation of Genesis chapter 34. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you stay blessed. Stay in God's presence and have a great rest of your day. I love you.